always, it's good to see everyone out tonight, especially our visitors. We always count you as our honored guest. I hope every opportunity you have to be with us, if you will. I was handed a note that we would like to do a card shower for our good brother Chip. Uh, to be cards of encouragement for him. And uh, he would bring those cards by next Sunday evening. Next Sunday, the 18th. I will go ahead and let everyone know, in case you haven't heard, uh, next Sunday afternoon I will be leaving to go to Pensacola, Florida to speak on a lectureship. I'll be speaking Wednesday at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, my nephew apologized about that, saying, I know it's right after lunch, but... So I guess he thinks I'll be able to keep everyone's attention. So I ask that you pray for me, but not only me, but for the success of the lectureship that will be going on. And uh, after that lectureship is over, if you want to go back and you want to read those lectures online, it is about religious history. And it will cover all different religions and talk about the history of each of those. My assigned topic was the popes. And I must tell you that it was a very challenging subject. I even had to go to the library I had to read, I had to study, and Daryl, I rather enjoyed doing that. As much as I never went to the library in college, I enjoyed the study, and it's very profitable for me, and uh, hopefully by, the, by Sunday, the bulletin, I will have that you have access to the computer that you can go online and you can watch those lectures uh, through the uh, World Wide Web if you want to, want to do that. This morning, we went to the book of Joshua, and we talked about claiming Canaan, and how this land is our land. And if you'll remember the three very simple points that I made to you, that God issued a call to Joshua. Joshua then took the call and issued a challenge to the people. And in response to the challenge of Joshua, the people made a commitment. Well, tonight, fitting into that thought of commitment, I want to go back to the Old Testament, and I want to go to the book of Daniel, and I want to look, about, uh, look at the individual known as Daniel. For the most of us, or for the majority of us, we will remember Daniel for one specific incident in his life. And all of you who remember Daniel was the one who was thrown in the lion's den. But as you begin to read in the book of Daniel, we'll see that he was just a young man as he was taken captive into the nation of Babylon. And there it was in Babylon that he was able to grow in spirit, that he was grown to grow in reputation, that he might be able to be there for some period of 70 years. But what I really see in Daniel is what it shows as an example to us. And that is that one can live in an ungodly world, yet live a godly life. Amen. It is possible. And we have the example of Daniel. And we have the example of Daniel based on a very simple premise. It all revolved around his commitment to God. And tonight again, I want to share, Ted, I'm going to only share three points. I know you think I need five to be scriptural, but I'm only sharing three tonight. I want us to see three things about Daniel's commitment. I want to show you that his commitment began early. Secondly, we want to examine the fact that his commitment was deep. And the third thing about his commitment is that his commitment was lasting. And so tonight, that's your sermon. But what is it, first of all, about his commitment being early? When I think about Daniel, I think about as he was taken into captivity. And look at chapter 1 of verse 8. Notice in Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Daniel purposed in his heart 
that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And when you think about that verse, he purposed it in his heart. And remember, he was just a young man. And so his commitment began at a very early age. When you think about the commitment of Daniel, I hope that you will be reminded of what the wise writer said in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 1, where he says, Remember now thy Creator when? In the days of your youth. You see, Daniel remembered the Creator when he was just a young man. Therefore, his commitment to God began at a very early age. But Daniel was not alone in this early age commitment. He was like Joseph, who was before. You remember Joseph, the youngest of the brothers, that was sold into slavery, into the land of Egypt, where he became a servant in the house of Potiphar. And when Potiphar's wife tried to cast herself upon him, what did he say? How can I sin what? against my God? Where did Joseph learn that that would be a sin? He was just a young man. You see, he learned it early. But not only do we see it in the life of Joseph before him, we also see it in the life of the young preacher Timothy later on, where he is reminded that went from a youth, you were taught by your mother and your grandmother. You see, it's not, it's not hard for us to understand that when we begin to train our children at an early age, the commitment that they have to the Lord will remain strong. Mm -hmm. It was the case with Daniel of old. And here was a young man who stood by his godly convictions. When Daniel was, was taken into captivity when he left home, he didn't leave God back home. He took God with him. And brethren, that's something that we need to learn. God cannot be placed in a box and be left at home. Because when we are his child, he goes everywhere with us. We need to make sure that we take him with us. And when you think about how he took God with him, it was because he took God with him that he was able to withstand blending in with the Babylonian society. You see, Daniel stood out in the land of Babylon. Daniel showed that you can be different than those that are in the world. And it was a man, Daniel was the one who had worthwhile years to give to God. While he was young, he gave his energy. And when he grew old, he gave his wisdom. I think there's a pattern in that for us today. I think the pattern is when we are young is when we do the majority of our work in the kingdom. But it is when, as we begin to grow older, we pass our wisdom and our knowledge on to that next generation so that the church will continue in a perpetual state. Daniel's commitment began at an early age. But secondly, when you think about Daniel tonight, let's understand that his commitment to God was deep. And the commitment that he had to God was deep because it showed in his outward conduct. Daniel had a different motive than just to impress those young men who were around him. Daniel understood that it didn't matter that he impressed those young men who surrounded him, but he understand the, understood the motive was that he would impress the God of heaven. You see, the commitment was not to man. The commitment was to God. And he had a deeper motive than just being defiant to those captives. You know, you, when you think about what he did 
And we'll talk about this in the next point. But when you think about what he did to be cast into the lion's den, what was he really saying? He was saying, my commitment is deeper to God than it is to those who can physically harm me. I think there's a verse in the New Testament that deals with that specific thought where it tells us that we should not fear the one who can kill the body, but that we should fear the one who can take the soul. You see, our commitment ought to be deep like Daniel's, knowing that while we may suffer physical harm and while we may go through different things, God is always with us. And when you look at verse 8 and you look at the end when it says he wouldn't take of the king's delicacies or, you know, the wine and all those things, it reveals to me that Daniel placed more emphasis on God than he did the pomp and the circumstance that went on with the position he held within the Babylonian government. You see, Daniel wasn't worried about the things of life because Daniel's commitment was to God who had the opportunity and has the power to grant eternal life. It was also reflected by the risk he took of nonconformity. In our world and in our time, we might say that Daniel was a rebel. And he was a rebel, wasn't he? Because Daniel rebelled against what the king's decree was. He rebelled against the people that tried to do it. You see, Daniel wanted to do what was right. And Daniel knew what was right because he understood that life on this earth was really nothing. That what really mattered was life eternal. And the same should be true for, the, for all of us. For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What profit is it in giving your soul away to the ways of the world? None. That's what Daniel was risking. That's what Daniel was reflecting in his life as he was non-conforming to the decree of the king. And that's why he didn't worry about those who talked about him and those who went against him. You see, Daniel risked his life rather than compromise. Daniel said, I will stand firm. Brother Joseph, I will stand true rather than compromise the truth of the gospel. Amen. I was reading an email earlier today from a, from a good friend of mine. And I don't know how old he is. I can't keep up. He's, he's probably in his 70s now. I know he began full-time preaching the year I was born because he consist, constantly reminds me of that fact. He's not in the pulpit full-time, but he preaches somewhere every Sunday morning. And this morning his lesson was, buy the truth and sell it not. You see, that's Daniel. That's Daniel. Daniel wanted to hold to the way of God and not sell it out for the whims of the world. Early, deep. And then lastly tonight, Daniel's commitment was lasting. And as I think about this aspect of his, his commitment being lasting, in verse 21, it says, Thus Daniel continued until the first year of King Cyrus. Here it was, Daniel, an old man, 90 years old, still faithful, still active, still strong in the Lord. All the years of his service had not worn him down, but all the years of his service Preparing for the lion's den. And so when you think about the lion's den. And the preparation he had to face going into the lion's den. 
It all started because of his reaction to the decree of Darius. All because he said, I will not give in. I will not go against what my God has told me and asked me to do. And so as he was prepared for the lion's den, just as well when he was placed in that den of lions and when the Lord shut the mouths of the lions, I believe that Daniel knew God would shut their mouths. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, he was not in fear of his life. And even if the, the lions would have taken his life, he would have been much better off than living life on this old earth. So Daniel was a winner no matter what happened. But I'm confident he knew God would deliver him and that God would take care of him. But after the incident in the lions then, what happened to Daniel? What happened to Daniel? Did Daniel not continue to grow in the influence in the nation of Babylon? Did he not rise in power and position? And so when you think about this lasting commitment that he had, it started, it was because it was early in his life that that commitment, commitment developed. And it went on until the very end of his life. I look at it this way. As Daniel grew older, his life exemplifies a life of spiritual growth. It is a life that was not satisfied with being at one state, but it was a life that continued to grow and continued to flourish in the service of the Lord. Let me just read a couple of things for you. By the time he needed to refuse the king's food, he already had the character that he needed. By the time he needed to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he had the wisdom that he needed. By the time he needed to interpret the handwriting on the wall, he had gained a reputation that he needed. By the time he needed to face the lion's den, he had developed the courage that he needed. By the time he helped deliver the Jews, he had developed the influence that he needed. All because of his commitment. <coughs> and all because his commitment never wavered. All because his commitment was lasting and enduring to the very end. You see, Daniel prospered during the reign of Cyrus. Cyrus, the one who emancipated the Jews. Cyrus knew Based on Daniel, his early commitment, his deep commitment, and his lasting commitment, Cyrus knew who the Lord God of heaven was. And I suggest to you it was because of Daniel. And so this morning as we talked about the commitment of the people to the call and the challenge of Joshua, isn't that what God is wanting us to do today? When we say that we want to be committed, are we going to be like Daniel? Is our commitment going to start early in life? Is our commitment going to be deep? And that is our faith that we build and develop in God. Or will our, child, will our commitment be lasting? Will we allow the situations, the challenges, the things that life throws at us, let's call them the curveballs of life, will we allow them to pull us away? Or is our commitment strong enough that it will draw us closer? I believe when I look at the life of Daniel, you know what I see? I see one who, no matter what life threw at him, Daniel became stronger and stronger and stronger. 
You see, I've said for many years that the trials and the temptations and the challenges we face in life, they are to be used to make us a better, stronger servant of the Lord. And I will assure you that no one here except the youngest of our young we have all been through some challenge. <clears throat> and if we're really honest with ourselves, I hope we would say that our faith has been tested. We have questioned why things happen. We have questioned what the motive is behind that. But we have an example of Daniel tonight who no matter what happened in his life, he may have questioned, but his reaction was always the same. My God will deliver me. What a perfect song you sang, Brother John, to introduce our lesson tonight. Because our God is able to deliver us. We are the ones that stop the deliverance. We are the ones that allow God to be pushed out. God is always there and He always will be. Tonight, where are you in your commitment? Are you somewhere between the early stage and the deep stage? Because it is early that the deepness gets deeper. And the deeper the commitment, the longer it will last. Tonight, where are you? If you're here not a member of the body of Christ, you can begin that journey. It's not too late. Nothing you've ever done can keep you from becoming a member of God's family. You just need to know the truth, believe the truth, and as you believe the truth, you see the need to repent, to leave the way of the world, to begin to live the way of God. Knowing that you need to confess that Jesus is the Son of the living God and be immersed with Him in the waters of baptism. Have your sins washed away so you can begin life anew, walking in that newness of life that Paul describes. Or tonight, maybe, maybe your commitment began early, but maybe your commitment hasn't been deep enough to make it last. And you've allowed the ways of the world to call you back as Brother Joel, Joseph mentioned in his prayers. And he mentions that just about every time he prays. But brother, what is it that has ensnared you if you have fallen away from the Lord? Again, I assure you, there's nothing you've done that the most powerful God ever known can forgive you. Tonight, if you need to come home repenting of sin, confessing those sins, we encourage you to do so while we stand and while we sing. The voice of the Savior says, Come, the cross where he died is inside.